the Confederacy of Independent Systems. This group, who believed that they were on a righteous mission to leave an unfair and corrupt republic, would find themselves to be pawns in a far more malignant game. But, what is the CIS? The Confederacy of Independent Systems, or CIS, was a coalition of systems and organisations that wanted to leave the Republic between 33 BBY and 25 BBY. To understand why these separatists wanted to leave the Republic, we have to look back. By 33 BBY, the Republic had enjoyed a millennia of peace with no major conflicts. However, the Republic had started to grow greedy, and began introducing new taxes and regulations, which would make it far harder and far more expensive to trade. This created a lot of animosity from large corporations who made huge profits from trading in tax-free zones, such as the Trade Federation. But most importantly, the poorer systems, particularly those around the Outer Rim, were unable to finance their trade due to their heavy taxes, which they believed were unfair as they were no different to those of the wealthy core worlds. It was in this tense time that Palpatine, wanting to elevate his position from Senator to Chancellor, coached the Viceroy of the Trade Federation, Newt Gunray, into blockading and later invading his homeworld of Naboo. Believing that an occupation of Naboo would be enough to scare the Republic into dropping their new taxes, Gunray agreed. The invasion is on schedule. I have the Senate bogged down in procedures. They will have no choice but to accept your control of the system. However, the Republic, outraged by the Federation's move, allowed Palpatine to call for a new election in which he would win and become Chancellor. He, no longer caring about what happened to the Federation's blockade, allowed it to be destroyed by a Jedi and Naboo Guard strike force. Despite this being a show of force to anyone who believed that they could defy the Republic, it only created further animosity and Palpatine, now in charge of the Senate, yearned for more power, and wasted no time in causing chaos. His new apprentice, Count Dooku, began rallying support of many systems and large organisations to his cause of leaving the Republic. This succession movement gained great pace, causing systems that had been loyal to the Republic for thousands of years to be plunged into civil war. The Separatists also created their own droid army, which created even more tension between the Republic and CIS. More systems will rally to our cause with your support, gentlemen. The Techno Union Army is at your disposal, Count. Their banking clan will sign your treaty. Good, very good. Our friends from the Trade Federation have pledged their support. In 22 BBY, the Separatists attempted to have Senator Amidala and two Jedi Knights executed in an arena on Geonosis. This led to Palpatine unleashing his clone army on the droids, and a huge battle ensued, with both the Republic and Separatists taking heavy losses. This resulted in a Separatist retreat. Now that the war was official, the entire galaxy was plunged into chaos. The Separatists began seizing major hyperspace lanes to connect their territories, and the Republic did the same. Throughout the war, the CIS managed to win a great deal of victories, however their main problem lied within their leadership. Not only was their head of state, Count Dooku, working for Sidious, making the war unwinnable, but their leadership was largely made up of rich corporation heads, such as Newt Gunray, Wat Tambor and San Hill, all of which cared very little about anything other than profits. For this reason, the Separatists became known to use brutal yet effective methods to ensure victory. For example, during the Battle of Ryloth, Wat Tambor had civilians placed around Separatist artillery so the Republic wouldn't be able to attack it. As well as this, they had Jabba the Hutt's infant son kidnapped in order to frame the Republic so they could use Hutt space, even carrying out a mass genocide on Mahari to ensure the local populace could not get in the way of the Confederacy collecting the valuable resources. They even targeted Republic medical stations to kill recovering troops before they could be returned to the field. However, it's important to note the majority of the Separatists didn't want the war, but with the head of state secretly prolonging it, and the wealthy corporations doing fairly well through war profiteering, they had little chance of ever agreeing to peace with the Republic. Some Separatist senators who did speak out against the war were assassinated on Dooku's orders. Your thoughts betray you, Viceroy. I can sense your concern. The fear that you will lose the wealth and the power that the war has given you. I have no idea what you're talking about. Finally, towards the end of the Three Year Conflict, the Republic began to lay siege to Separatist strongholds such as shipyards and droid factories. Separatist homeworlds began to host the worst fighting in the war, and when the head of state Count Dooku was executed by Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker, the end was in sight for the Separatists.
They moved their entire leadership, primarily the wealthy war profiteers, to a remote base on Mustafar, where Darth Sidious promised that they would be safe whilst the war was brought to an end. However, Sidious no longer had need for the Separatist leadership, but did however want the valuable resources they controlled. He had his new apprentice, Darth Vader, completely wipe out the entire Confederacy Council. With nearly the entire droid army shut down, many ex-Separatists would quickly join the new Galactic Empire to avoid complete devastation. Some systems managed to hold out for up to four years after the end of the Clone Wars, but ultimately it was all in vain. Particularly the moon of Antar IV, which had allied itself with the Confederacy, was made an example of by Moff Wilhuff Tarkin, killing many ex-Separatist sympathisers and even more civilians. Meanwhile, most lifeforms on Geonosis were exterminated as the Empire swept over the once Separatist world. The Emperor was very precise in ensuring the Confederacy could not rise up again, possibly to cover up his own involvement with the war altogether.